How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a mid six figure full time Amazon seller. And in today's video, I'm going to be diving into uh, Be Cool Repricer, uh, which is my personal favorite repricing tool. Uh, if you're not already using a repricer for Amazon, you will see very quickly why it's a very important uh, tool to be using. Uh, but I'm going to dive into exactly where I use Be Cool um, and exactly what my rules are in those cases that help me maximize my profits. Um, because repricing is not all about uh, chasing that low price. There's a lot of nuance that can go into it that can really help your business out. So hopefully I'm going to be dropping some gems in this video. Even if you're an experienced seller, hopefully uh, you're going to be able to learn from this video. Uh, if you have been a fan of the channel for a while, you're probably noticing that things are a little different. Um, I'm recording on a folding table uh, about to move to Wisconsin. So just trying to grind out some videos for you guys. Uh, the rest of the room is in shambles right now. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of get into the content of the video and see what we can learn. So when you first go ahead and boot up Be Cool, uh, it might feel pretty overwhelming at first. You're gonna be greeted with a big long list of all the products that you sell. Hopefully it's a big long list of all the great profitable products you sell. Uh, but there's gonna be a lot of information that is gonna be important to read um, and really maximize the value out of this repricer. Um, there, there's some nice features that you can actually integrate with Be Cool. Um, so I'll just go through it line by line very simply. I'll show you what this means and then we can dive into some specific repricing rules to show you exactly how to maximize those profits. Um, so so on this line here, uh, you're going to see your SKU, you're going to see whether or not it's repricing it, you're going to see uh, the sales channel, it'll even show you the buy box rotation here, uh, so you can see at a glance. Uh, so in this case, these products weren't getting buy box rotation. Uh, these were some used products, but let's say you've got a new product, you're getting no buy box rotation. That can be a nice little thing to look at a glance and see, oh, it's probably time to change my, uh, my repricing rules so that I can actually go ahead and get a little bit of that buy box rotation. Um, you can also click through to the actual web page uh, just by clicking there. It's going to open up another tab. Um, there's lots of information to see here. There's also the sales rank. It's got the date you created it. It's got your quantity left. So you're, maybe you see you've got 0% buy box rotation, but you've got 1,000 left. It's definitely time to start uh, thinking about cutting some prices on that, on that item. Um, and then you can also, there's also going to be a cost column. You can set this manually, or if you integrate your Be Cool subscription with Inventory Lab, that's actually going to automatically populate there for you. Like you can see here, um, I did not type in these numbers into Be Cool, but they were actually auto populated there from Inventory Lab, which is a nice little feature. Um, and then here's where it kind of gets into uh, the actual meat of the repricing. So in this case, I'm going to check out this, this game that I was selling a while back here. Um, so you can see the on every item that you sell, you're going to have to set the minimum price and the maximum price. Uh, so to do that, you're going to have to just check out the, the price lines of these items you're selling. So I wanted to find a pretty good example of why you would want to worry about the exact minimums and maximums of an item when you're listing it. So I found this item here. Uh, it's just a book. Um, it looks like it's selling decently fast. Um, the price hasn't moved in quite a while. Uh, we can zoom out here. Looks like it used to sell for slightly more, but it's been consistently not a great book, um, but it, you know, solid couple buck flip maybe. Uh, so to figure out what we want to sell it for, you might look at this. You might look at the new used or the uh, the used offers over here. See that it's selling for nine twenty seven. You might go, oh, okay, I'll put it at nine bucks and move on with your life. Um, but the, the reason that I like to actually look at every item, um, if you're doing a bunch, a bunch of books, I would say that Be Cool is not the best software, um, but that's kind of the only caveat to Be Cool, especially for arbitrage and all that kind of stuff. It's a great software because you can actually dig into the data, set exactly where you want it to sell, where you don't want it to sell. So in this case, we're going to look at the used offers here because that's what we were selling back in the day. Uh, we're going to filter out the prime options. So you see this, that it was selling for $9.27. Uh, but if you actually go ahead and check out the other offers here, it looks like it goes immediately to 10 That's also still in acceptable condition. Uh, so people might skip over this one. Here's our first option. Uh, very good condition. And it's for $10.24. But if you look down here, uh, you can see it's going for 14 and then 15 and then 15.50. Uh, so that price goes up pretty quick here. Uh, so in this case, the reason I wouldn't want to use a rules-based repricer where it's not actually considering um, what what's uh, what prices we might actually be able to get. Uh, the reason I like using Be Cool in this case is because instead of setting it that that nine dollar price point, making probably no profit at all, we can actually go in here um, and since we know that we could probably sell it. We could wait for those couple sellers to sell out. This book sells decently fast. Those two, those two sellers in our way are probably going to sell out decently fast. Um, if, if, and that's even if people want to buy the acceptable copies. So we could actually go in here and set our minimum price at something like twelve dollars and fifty cents, or even thirteen dollars, uh, just so we know we get that next sale after those two, two or three cheaper offers sell out. Um, and then we want to be that next sale, just so we can squeeze a couple extra dollars and profit out, but also not be. Um, 
uh, waiting around for that great super high price uh, that might never come. Um, and then you can also worry about setting your max price. This becomes more important uh, when you are, some, maybe you're the only person on the listing. You don't want the price to get too high because then the sales would slow down. In this case, it doesn't really matter because if we go any higher than this Amazon price, we're never going to sell it because it's a used copy book. Uh, but uh, there's there's a couple use cases for having that max price. I generally like to set it decently high and just let it do its thing. The minimum price is way more important in my opinion. Uh, but there are a couple use cases for that max price. And then over here, you're going to actually go ahead and select the rule that you want to use. Um, and then this is what we're going to get into the, the actual rules that you use. Um, so this is where the magic really happens in Be Cool. So we're going to go over here to our repricing rules. Um, I personally use the AI version. I'm going to be showing you how to do the, the rules for the cheaper version. Uh, the, the starter version is only $25 a month. Um, it's very, very competitively priced. Um, if you guys want to check out a free trial, there's going to be a free trial link down below. I strongly encourage you guys to check that out if you don't already have a repricer. Uh, but so I personally use the AI option. Um, it's I've found it to be super powerful. It's it's made me a lot of money against using uh, just the rules based repricer. That said, it's it is a hundred dollars a month, so it's not a small investment. Um, I would definitely suggest you you to to be doing maybe ten even twenty thousand dollars a month before you um, invest in that, just to make sure you're um, selling enough to make it make sense to invest so much in a repricer. Um, but so I'm gonna be showing you. Uh, this is the rule that I use all the time. Um, you can use any of these other rules. I'm just, I just like to use this one as a custom rule. Um, they have some default rules set in, um, but this is the one that I've kind of tailored over time. So I'd encourage you, um, to maybe start by the, the template that I'm going to kind of show you here and then maybe adapt to your preferences and what you learn over time. And then eventually hopefully you, hopefully you get better at repricing and using repricers than me. That's, that's the goal of the channel, uh, to make you guys better Amazon sellers than me. Uh, so after we have kind of selected our rule, we're, we're telling it, we want to build a custom rule here uh, we're just going to go to next and here's where uh, we've got some some steps to go through here to see exactly um, what we want to compare it to um, personally i would select to compare it with the buy box price um, it's a fairly common occurrence where uh, then the lowest price so in this case we can choose between the lowest price or the buy box price um, but from personal experience, there's been quite a few items where the low price I can think of one of my best replens over the last year. Uh, the low price has been anywhere from twelve dollars and twelve fifty um, FBA. But I've been selling this pro uh, the item very consistently for fourteen to fifteen dollars, uh, just because that's where that buy box price line actually sits, and that's who's actually sitting in the buy box. Um, so that's why I think it's super important to be comparing it to the buy box price, not necessarily the low price. Um, because sales happen at the buy box. They don't happen at the lowest price. Now, a lot of times that's going to be the same thing. The low price will be the buy box, but the buy box um, does not always necessarily mean that it's, you have to have the lowest price. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, so that's why I personally match the buy box price. Um, this rule I use for my FBA, uh, FBI, FBA items, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to be comparing that to FBA, non-featured FBA, and then Amazon, just in case Amazon comes onto the listing. In an ideal world, I never have to compete with Amazon, but we all know how that goes. Uh, we don't, we unfortunately do have to compete with Amazon from time to time. Um, so you can set your seller fulfilled prime offers. Um, I personally don't do seller fulfilled prime. So if you're doing seller fulfilled prime, you would probably consider doing this as FBA, uh, but personally I have no experience there. You can even exclude sellers by specific ID. So let's say you're a bookseller uh, and you want to avoid Jensen like the plague, uh, you could add their seller ID in there and then your repricer would ignore that. You can ignore free pricing or free shipping and ex expedited shipping. Um, I personally exclude sellers with bad feedback. Um, because those people tend to get the buy box less. So I'm looking at lower than 80%. I don't want to consider repricing against them. If they have uh, zero or, you know, if they're a brand new seller, um, I want to exclude that. Um, and then also back ordered product, I do exclude. Um, so back ordered product, you might look at a listing and say, um, maybe you're shopping on Amazon, you, you want to buy the certain item, but it says uh, it's fulfilled by Amazon, but it won't arrive for four weeks. That, that product is probably on back order, meaning it's somewhere between uh, the FBA seller's warehouse and Amazon's final destination for that item. Uh, but that stuff is not going to be competitive, is not going to have competitive shipping times. So I generally would advise you to ignore that. Um, then you can also exclude people based on handling time um, and the item condition. Uh, this could be useful if you are doing a bunch of used books or collectibles, maybe uh, that could be definitely for collectibles that could be useful. Uh, but personally, pretty much everything I'm selling is in new condition. So next here, we're going to 
uh, really get into the the magic of it. Uh, so when the buy box winner is above the minimum price, um, that means we so we've set our minimum and maximum price, uh, and that means we're in a we're in a nice spot where the person who's getting the buy box is in that range that we want to sell it for. Uh, you always always match the buy box price. Do not undercut people. So a lot of people when they first get their repricer, they'll take this this setting right here and they'll set it to one penny. Um, in other words, they're going to be trying to un undercut that competition by one penny. This is a very bad idea. It's going to tank your listings because that other person's repricer is going to be set to match your price. So you're going to undercut cut them they're going to match you you're going to undercut them until suddenly you're at your minimum price after a day or two uh it's just a spiral into disaster for that listing um plus the decreasing your prices by a penny uh almost never increases your sales generally the buy box rotates among people within a certain couple percentages of the buy box price so cutting by a penny is going to do nothing for your sales and it's going to tank that listing very fast so always 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 match the buy box price do not tank the price uh there's my psa for all of you new sellers don't take the listings. <laughs> um, so when that when the buy box is below the minimum price, uh, I'm going to use auto compete here. Um, this means so I'm going to open up this box here. So we can see here the buy box winner is uh, has it for ten dollars, but that's lower than we want to sell it for. Um, so we are I would rather compete within that range that I am comfortable selling it for. I'm going to hope that that buy box winner sells out when they're selling it for too cheap, and then that price is going to come back to us, and then the sales are going to start rotating among all of us who stayed priced correctly. Um, um, to to really maximize our profits um, and then when the buy box winner equals the minimum price I'm just going to use my minimum price again I'm going to match those prices always uh, if there's buy box above the maximum price um, this is where that maximum price rules could come into come into play here uh, generally I'm setting my max price is pretty high uh, so I'm just going to set it to max price if I ever set a max price and it means something that means that I've done some research on that keepograph to see where the sales actually start to taper off if the prices get a little bit too high so that's why I'm to set a max price on some of those items so let's say the item starts selling way way slower if it's for 60 bucks but at 55 dollars it was still selling decently fast i would set a maximum price there at 55 dollars. so even if those other people are trying to sell it for that crazy high price i'd rather have volume it's still going to be super profitable if it's at your maximum price for your repricer uh, so that's that's the reason that i would go ahead and um undercut those people who are above you um, and then when the buy box is below the minimum price, I'm just going to set at that minimum price, wait for the prices to come back up. It's going to be using that auto compete rule. Um, and then when the buy box winners are uh, below and above, I'm going to set it to that minimum price, wait for those uh, people who are too low to sell out. And then it's going to start competing with the people within that actual range that I've set. Um, when no one owns the buy box, I don't reprice it. Um, I've been kind of flip flopping on this one mentally, but the way that I'm kind of rationalizing this is if. Um, if there's no buy box winner, we could hypothetically lower the the price until we get that buy box back um, and establish some sales volume. But other people are just going to be following you to the bottom. And there's a ton of listings where there's no buy box, but it's super profitable, super high volume. Um, and that's a lot of what I sell on. Uh, so if you're entirely reliant on the buy box in your business, maybe you want to um, un keep cutting by one penny until your repricer finds the buy box. But people are just going to be chasing you down until you find the buy box. You're putting in the hard work and then other people are going to be sharing those sales with you once you do find the buy box um, and then once you're the, when you're the only seller i use that max price um, again that's that max price comes into play where you can really squeeze some nice profits out um, but the max price is not insanely important uh, when the buy box winners are excluded uh, for whatever reason that might be um, i'm not really sure when this would be the case even um, i'm not going to reprice i don't want my repricer to do anything weird uh, where it goes way too high or way too low and i lose some money um, i'm just going to be safe there uh, the price change safety net, if you're new to repricers, if you're worried about your repricer costing you a bunch of money, maybe you're worried that you'd set up the settings wrong, uh, you could limit it on how much it can actually change the prices by. So you could set it, um, hey, don't change my prices by more than 10%. If it does, um, I'll go in and look at it manually, or I'll wait for that price to come to a point where maybe it's only cutting by 5%. Um, personally, I... I let my repricer do its thing. Um, I'm I'm comfortable on the rules that I've given my repricer and the minimum and maximum, so I'm not actually going to go ahead and change that. Um, and then the rest of this down here, uh, you can go ahead and select uh, who you're going to be competing with. Uh, you could select to compete with Amazon. I have a separate rule set for competing with Amazon. Um, and then in this case, this is just for my FBA versus FBA, and then FBM versus FBA, and FBM versus FBM. 
Um, I don't want to compete my FBA listings with FBM listings because my shipping time on those FBA listings is going to be way better. So I'm going to be able to charge that prime bump for actually giving that two day shipping to the customers going through the effort of shipping it all to Amazon, waiting for the lead time. I want to make sure that I'm well rewarded for that by increasing my profits. I don't want to compete with the merchant fulfilled offers on that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on here. I'm trying not to take forever, um, but hopefully it's full of value for you if you're trying to get set up in this repricer. Um, for your buy box settings, um, I do not want to change my uh, my buy box prices. If I'm if I'm in the buy box, I don't want anything else to change unless other people react, um, start tanking. Then maybe I would, or not tanking necessarily, but maybe they're changing up and down. I want to go ahead and follow them, but I don't want to make any crazy rules when I'm when I'm actually in that buy box. Generally, when you're in the buy box, you just want to kind of stay at that price, wait wait for the sales to keep trickling in, and then react to what other people might be doing to that listing. Um, and then again, I'm doing FBA, FBM, and Amazon here, or not FBM, uh, the, the both FBA offers and then Amazon here. Um, and then again, you've got that price safety net change option here. Um, you could also set it up on a repeated schedule. So maybe uh, you in be cool, uh, actually reprices every 15 minutes or so, uh, but maybe you don't want it to reprice that often. Maybe you want to see what the market's kind of doing. Personally, um, I think your repricer should be going as often as possible um, to really chase the maximum amount of sales there. Um, and in case maybe the prices are going up, you want to make sure that you're going up with that listing, um, making sure that you're squeezing out as much profit as you can. But if you wanted to set it up to where maybe it's only repricing a couple times a day, you're more than welcome to do that or if you want to re if you only want it to reprice on certain dates you could also do that um, if, you, if any of you have use cases for that feel free to drop those down below um, i'd be interested to see what kind of ideas you guys have with this but i personally don't think um, that's very valuable uh, except for some maybe super specific niche cases in general i'm just going to reprice as often as i can um, but for this specific rule that's that's pretty much all there is to it um, so we're going to go ahead and save that rule and finish it. Um, that is the rule that um, the bulk of my non AI listings are under. Um, if you guys want to see, I'll go ahead and briefly run through um, one of my other rules here. Um, in the in this this rule, I like to just target the lowest price. If this is a merchant fulfilled product, um, this is the one I throw on stuff where maybe it was sent back to me from the warehouse. I don't want to send it back in. Um, I just want to sell it as fast as possible, and I'm listing it merchant fulfilled. Um, this could also be um, interesting during maybe uh, like a Christmas rush where Amazon's selling out. Uh, you've got store, you've got inventory at your actual house or at your warehouse, um, and you just want to get those sales whenever possible when Amazon's going out of stock. Um, so in this case, I'm targeting the lowest price. I'm targeting everything because these are my merchant fulfilled offers um, similar to everything else except for with, with merchant fulfilling. Um, the uh, criteria are a little bit even more strict because you're shipping directly from you to the customer instead of to Amazon and then to the customer. So um, the feedback might be a little bit more important there. So I've kind of bumped those requirements up a little bit. Um, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just be targeting the lowest price. In this case, I'm not targeting the buy box. Um, I'm trying to really, really just maximize those prices in there. I've got my FBM compared here. Um, and then in, when I'm in the buy box, I don't want to really change it there. Um, in the past, I'd used this, this safety net here, as you can see. Um, but as before, I don't want to be changing my prices when I'm actually in the buy box. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only difference there is I'm just targeting the lowest price. I want to get as many sales as I possibly can. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and save and finish that. And if you are interested in the AI version, um, the AI version is nice because it actually just reprices. Um, well, the, the, the rules are a lot simpler because it's all, you know, AI based. Um, and I found this AI to be super reliable. Um, a crazy percentage of my sales come from the, the listings that are repriced by these AI repricers. Um, in some cases I've seen items where um, I had that rules-based repricer and then I activated the AI repricer on it and the price actually went up and so did sales volume. Don't ask me how that happened, but this thing really fights for the buy box. Um, personally, this is what I've got it set up for here. I'm not going to really dive into my rationale because uh, I figure most of you are going for the $25 a month option, but I kind of wanted to explain why I personally use the AI option. Uh, I personally think it's way more powerful. I've had a lot of success with it, and at some point, it's definitely worth the investment in your business. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found a ton of value in it. If you did, please help my business out. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hopefully, I've helped out yours in this video. Let's make it kind of a trade. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those down below as well. I'm always happy to talk with you guys, uh, but I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.